The last time the Detroit Lions won a playoff game was in 1992. And in that 30 year span from then till now, they have only had nine winning seasons. And they've also had some great, great players like Barry Sanders, one of the best running backs of all time, Calvin Megatron Johnson, one of the freakiest wide receivers we have ever seen. And of course, the reigning Super Bowl champion quarterback, of the LA Rams, Matthew Stafford. And despite having some greats, there have been little to no success to be shown for it, which is why I'm now here to rebuild this team from the ground up into a powerhouse, into a dynasty, and to strive for much more than just a playoff win. We want the Super Bowl, we want it all. Is it gonna be a challenge? Of course it is but I think we can do it. But before we head in, just want to say thank you to everybody for 4,800 subscribers, an awesome milestone to hit. But of course, we are looking for that big 5K. So if you guys are new here and end up enjoying this video, a subscribe would mean the absolute world. Of course, like this video as well if you guys want more rebuilds in the future. And yeah. Here we go. The Detroit Lions are off to a rough start. If you look at the win column, only one in three. However, if I can say one thing about them, they've been entertaining. Jared Goff, the goofball. I mean, look at it. My name is Jeff. Four weeks into the season, I'm not gonna lie, he's putting up some nutty stats. I believe he's about top five in yards, tied for first in touchdowns. Is he the QB of the future? Not with that big old thing. God damn. For real though, shout out Jared Goff, putting up better numbers than Matthew Stafford, but he also won the ring, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> DeAndre Swift is unfortunately hurt right now, probably looking to return after their bye week, but man, he started off the season so, so good. I honestly rate Swift very, very highly. I think his biggest problem in the last few seasons has been efficiency, and he's been blowing that out the water so far this season. We know how amazing he is as a receiving back as well, and once he's back, I'm going to be super happy because he's got that dog in him. However, um, speaking of dogs, <clears throat> if you piss like a puppy, stay on the parts! And let the big dogs eat! Jamal Williams has been holding it down ever since Swift went out, putting up some crazy numbers, a ton of touchdowns, a real leader in the locker room as well, and one of the most likable dudes in the league. And also, he... Whoa. Whoa, calm down, Jamal. Whoa, calm whoa, down, whoa, Jamal. Whoa, whoa. Don't pull out the nine. <laughs> Amon Raw wide receiver one St. Brown. Speaking about starting the year on fire, Amon Raw has been so good. The big question mark at the tail end of last season was, you know, no Hawkinson, no Swift. Who else were they really supposed to pass to anyway? But now with Swift, with TJ Hawkinson, he is elevated to another level, putting up true wide receiver one numbers and every team that passed up on him. I'm gonna give every team hell. This offense has been super fun, super high scoring, right? But guess what? They still haven't even unleashed the man they traded up to grab in the first round of last year's draft, Jameson Williams. The absolute stud wide receiver out of Alabama as they usually are. Absolute speed demon, home run threat. Of course, still recovering from his torn ACL, but could be back as soon as after their bye week in week six. And once he gets on the field with everybody else, this could get crazy. <laughs> because you also have one of the best tight ends in the league in TJ Hawkinson, who's recently coming off an amazing game. His best game ever. He's probably around that like four to seven range, you know, top guys being your Kelsey's, your Kittles, your Tim Tebow's. Huh? He probably just fits around after that. And their offensive line, as we know, is good as ever. Shout out to Panay Sewell, Jonah Jackson, who are playing out of their minds this year. But as always, with some good, there comes some bad as well. And it's been this defense. Although there are some shining pieces. And of course, the main one being Jeff Okuda, who has just been locked down this season now into his third season although kind of second because he was hurt all of last year he's starting to finally play like the number three pick that he was chosen to be and he's been so good he's put in some really good performances against the likes of Devontae Smith Terry McLaurin Justin Jefferson as well and is the clear CB1 of this team now which is great because uh prior to this season you know he hasn't really looked too good but guess what he was a young cornerback coming in the league what did you expect <laughs> And like I said, clear CB1 of this team. Number two overall pick, Aiden Hutchinson, has had a solid start so far as well as a few sacks to his name already. It's still a little shaky, definitely not the final product yet, and we can see that, but it's a good starting base to work with, and hopefully we can see him become a beast today. Although a super exciting team filled with a ton of young, great players as well, there are definitely some massive areas we're going to have to improve in, so it's going to be a challenge. Definitely not expecting to make any noise here in, you know, two to three seasons, but as long as we can hit on our draft picks, do some work in free agency, and make the right moves, I think year 40, year five, we can potentially bring a Labardi to Detroit. Let's try. And ladies and gentlemen, would you look at that? We have a mentor rookie. One of the best messages you can get as it almost guaranteeably gets you another dev trait for a rookie. Unfortunately, this one is for James Mitchell. Who? Oh! He is staring into my soul. I was really hoping that was going to be for Jameson Williams. That would have been amazing. James Mitchell has such a good head on his shoulders. I'm convinced that it's not a matter of if, but when he becomes great coach. Ladies and gentlemen, James Mitchell is star development. Um, what is dev trait? Mid-season mark. 
and we are to three and three actually 500 second in the division as well not bad and that's with me starting um the year off one and three as they are in real life unfortunately they don't have the start today rosters yet on madden so just had to do that we also have a breakout wide receiver paired with a tandem breakout on offense oh my goodness for wide receiver amon raw or jameson williams would both be awesome it's amon raw st brown to go up to superstar development he needs three touchdowns or 150 yards golf feed that man and then the tandem breakout was for jameson williams who saw him on raw st brown couldn't be stopped last game so let's challenge him as well i guess get jameson williams now 150 plus yards so um golf you're gonna have to have a day aren't you <laughs> go ahead and sim the breakout game it is against the miami dolphins though a sti nah bro what <laughs> i didn't change any playbooks or anything as well but as you can see we just smacked him. We beat the Cowboys as well. The only three games I fixed was the first four because that's the real life stats. 38 to three. As um, a Dolphin fan, you can see my Tua jersey right behind me. Kind of tough. Not sure what happened there. Tua just didn't do anything. Golf only had 225 yards, so he didn't get both of them. But yeah, we won convincingly. Oh my God, did I just see that right? If you piss like a puppy, stay on the porch four touchdowns for jamal williams as well as 53 yards deandre swift was stalled as well unfortunately no breakouts for amon raw or jameson williams what the heck <laughs> i didn't get it done today coach but to be honest i don't feel like i was given the opportunity if i'm not a focal point of this offense then whatever that's fine but i'm disappointed amon raw what the heck man team chemistry down 25 percent fans up 10 percent if you know you know <laughs> packers six and two top of the division we lose to them but breakout d line now Ooh, if this is hutchinson that would be amazing it's a lame mcneil will also take that could potentially be my interior defensive lineman for the future hold the bears to less than 100 rushing yards or get him just one interception for his fumble tackle for loss or sacks we got another interdivisional game as well against the bears three and six have a terrible O line give up a ton of hurries and pressures every single week they barely even pass the ball so we should be able to get a cheeky little tackle for loss not gonna lie that game was a humbling experience aleem come on man i'm here in week 11 though of course for scouting focus player wait did we win we did win 26 17 shout out to you too yum too yum to them what my national scout is on qbs there are not many in this class maybe just these three guys brandon sarah just looks okay i mean just bees all around there nothing really stands out he's 6'6 strong arm archetype 21 years old is very nice out of georgia tech ratings he's not the best athlete but does have great to elite strength and throw power carl nash on the other hand the qb out of hawaii 6'4 improviser there does have a short and under pressure there b deep and medium ratings great to elite acceleration this dude is an athlete change of direction as well great to elite strength throw power ain't the best though but he also has a awareness a break sack throw and run under pressure wow carl nash might be him and then parker morris the third guy i mean just doesn't look that good <laughs> focus player number one though going to christopher jeffrey a db out of Ole miss b man coverage not bad partner in crime to akuda second one's going to jeremiah Dalton, the auburn linebacker looking really good off his base stats i want to know more and last but not least defensive tackle antonio herrick looks like the man out of notre dame they're known for their trenches although for the other side of the ball what you know what i mean week 18 is there a sneaky chance we make playoffs we don't finish second in the division though with a 7 in 10 record you know what i can't be mad about that or maybe i can because if we suck then we would have a better draft pick but whatever let's go check out some stats though and for offensive yards we were 23rd in the league definitely not great there defensively actually fourth quite literally the complete opposite of in real life right now so that's kind of funny golf 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 yeah i talked you up a lot you're having a good start to this season but let's be real i will be looking for a new quarterback either this year or next year wasn't too great 4400 yards 28 touchdowns 17 picks and he's getting paid how much yeah i mean no way he's getting paid that russell wilson money wait huh? russell wilson sucks now i forgot let's ride perfect deandre swift wasn't really too great 907 yards under four carry seven touchdowns jamal williams vultured 14 of them as well as 3.2 carry 300 yards not a great run game oh it's jameson williams that leads the way with over 1100 yards for him and amon ross st brown there four touchdowns for the rookie and seven for st brown three for chark jr with 850 yards hawkinson also decent year 800 yards 11 tutties shout out to the star james mitchell two touchdowns nice nice but it was the defense that was actually quite good this season and the leader for tackles made was alex ends alone with 118 tfls we got ourselves aiden hutchinson what a year 
22 TFLs from 11 sacks to add on to that. 18 for Ali McNeil. Romeo Akwara with 15 as well. 14 for Onzerike. Malcolm Rodriguez even chipped in with 11. And sack numbers two in the double digits with Hutch and Akwara here. Not bad at all. Pick numbers? Five for CB1. Jeff Okuda. Him going up to Superstar would be awesome. Mike Hughes, three. Aruwarie, two. Derek Barnes, two. Shout out to him. Aruwarie. Aruwarie. Yeah. MVP for the third season in a row goes to Aaron Rodgers. Can we um can we get this man out of our division? Ooh, Cooper Cup wins Offensive Player of the Year, but they only went six and eleven. If I'm not mistaken, we do still have their first round pick. How did how do they win both of these? I mean, it is Cooper Cup and Aaron Donald, but I think we have their first round pick because of the Matt Stafford trade. Drake London actually wins Offensive Rookie of the Year, but Jameson Williams right behind him there. Love to see it. And Aiden Hutchinson is your Defensive Rookie of the Year. Let's go. Ooh, Malcolm Rodriguez four best O line went to. Mark Glowinski? What in the world? Any of our guys in there? How? But John Feliciano is in here? What's going on? <laughs> Guess the Giants were just feasting in the trenches. Best DB actually is um AJ Terrell, but I see Jeff Akuda at number five. And let's go ahead and check out some Devies now. Not expecting much on offense as our stats were kind of mid. We actually get Hako to up to superstar development. That's really cool to see. Unfortunately, no St. Brown, Swift, or Jameson Williams, though. Defense though. Jeff Okuda does not go up. Aiden Hutchinson does, though. Superstar development now. That is awesome. No Malcolm Rodriguez as well. Tough. Or even a Lee McNeil. I, I was hoping he would get one. And the Super Bowl winners are the Tampa Bay Buccaneers beating the Bills 16-14. Super Bowl MVP is Jamel Dean. Brady, I'm sick of you, man. Go and spend some time with your damn wife, man. Oh, if I check out our draft picks, though, where you at? Oh, my God. Five? We have pick five, pick nine, pick 41 as well. Oh my God, the Rams has done a, 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 a what? The Rams has done a, what am I saying? The Rams have done us a favor. Accurate. Huh? Oh wait, I have not looked at any contracts. I, that just went over my mind. Who's here? Jack Gold Fox, Jamal Williams, Deshaun Elliott, DJ Chark, Mike Hughes, Aruwarie. Okay, it's nothing too crazy. Obviously this team is really young. Jack Fox, if I do resign him, I'll just do it in for agency for hopefully less money. Jamal Williams, who had a great season, you know? Big locker room presence for us as well. Maybe I get him back. Cause if you go piss like a puppy. 28 years old now, definitely do not want a three year deal. Maybe two deal max. I might even, I'm gonna bump it up a tiny bit, 100K on it. I would like to, okay, okay, bye. You got me angry, piss. Jamal, Jamal, you gotta stop, bro. Deshaun, wh what did I do to you, bro? <laughs> I'm gonna still try to get you back though. Cause he's not really asking for a big contract here. I mean, five mil, five year deal, Deshaun Elliott. And he wants to go to free agency. Okay. Chark, I'm probably going to let walk. Obviously, Jameson and St. Brown are those guys, as well as Hawkinson. He's, he's kind of fourth choice. Mike Hughes and Oru Warrior are quite interesting. I might get one of them back. And that one is going to be Mike Hughes because he actually wants to rejoin. Kind of. Not really. But more than Oru Warrior. <laughs> I think a four-year deal is fine. I'll bump it up a tiny bit. What are you saying? Okay. My team, everybody hates me. Okay. Let's try to get Oru Warrior. Instead, I'll bump it up a tiny bit as well. Oh, what the? All right, whatever. I'm, I'm going to free agency. <laughs> and we got ourselves Roquan Smith, Kareem Hunt, Levante David, Elton Jenkins, Odell is here, Jamel Dean, Super Bowl MVP, looking to get his back. He would be a great addition to our DB room. Davenport would be fire as well. Okay, I like some of these names I'm seeing. Hey, yo, I had high hopes for the Panthers and Baker Mayfield this year. I said they'd make the playoffs, and so far... Bleh. Gonna give Jamal Williams the same deal. He doesn't have an offer, so. The five players I'm gonna be targeting are Jamel Dean would be amazing to have alongside Jeff Okuda, Marcus Davenport, alongside Aiden Hutchinson would be great. Jabril Peppers, we need safety help badly. Jamal Williams to bring him back, and Derek and Yachty. Let's go ahead and, how do I do this? What did I just press, tutorial? No, eval, 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 left stick is broken. Davenport, Jamal Williams, and Yachty are still here, but my signings. Jamel Dean went to the Falcons, and Jabril went to the Commanders, bro. Dang. Do still have some options here. Chris Harris, Desmond King would be a good one. Two-year deal. I'm not going to bump up or down the money at all. Desmond King and Ronnie Harrison added on. Now let's go ahead and eval number two and see what we can do. Davenport is still here as well as Inyadi, but my signings now consist of Jamal Williams, Desmond King, Ronnie Harrison. Let's go. And Davenport, I gave him a ton of money. Obviously, he just has no interest, so it's going to be kind of tough. I'm just going to eval here for the one last time. We didn't get either of them. Roquan is still just chilling here. You think I won't? That is um quite a lot of money. I won't even lie, but you know what? I'm just I'm just gonna offer it. Why not? And we didn't get Roquan. quite an underwhelming for agency. Not gonna lie, but you know what? it's okay. We're still building our squad to try to make it as attractive as possible for people to want to join us. Hopefully um sooner rather than later. But let's go ahead and check out some class. 
Ooh, Carl Nash has officially leapfrogged Brandon Sarah as QB1 in this class. Top 5 projection now, which he wasn't before. Let's go ahead and check out his physicals. Yeah. Elite acceleration, great agility, elite change of direction, elite strength as well. Absolutely killed the combine too. This might be our guy. This might be our guy. It has to be. And then Jeremiah Dalton, we have him at 95% now. He's got A pursuit, A tackle, A zone coverage. Just 22 years old still. Elite acceleration, speed there. Pretty good combine as well. He definitely will be my pick later on. Focus players are a safety. Harvey Merriweather, left end. Devontae Randolph in the linebacker. Devin Hands. And now, draft time. Though the Patriots are actually the number one pick. Interesting. Let's go ahead and first and foremost check out who the um the Heisman winner was. And look at, look at that. It's Hawaii's Carl Nash. We got to do anything and everything possible to get him. We have pick number five. He's projected to go number four. Randolph, I also private worked out only round one, can't be asked. I think we can comfortably sim the Patriots pick. I might go up with the Texans because there is kind of a scare. Maybe they don't ride with Davis Mills anymore. Let's go ahead and trade up. Pick number five in a future fifth. Huh, that's that's crazy. <laughs> Add in a six round pick and we take those. And it's a huge trade up. The Detroit Lions are trading up to pick number two with the Houston Texans in need of a QB. There is a Heisman winner. Goes by the name Carl Nash out of Hawaii. Put up all the great stats in college. Has all the great ratings. Killed the combine. Can he be the savior of Detroit football? Carl Nash. Hidden development. 90 throw power. 94 change of direction. 91 acceleration. Still just 22 years old. QB1. What's also huge is we traded up in front of the Vikings in case they were going to go with the QB, which they should if they're pick number three. So made sure to leapfrog them so we don't have to play them every year, twice a year. Pick number nine now. What do I do here? Pick number nine. And guys, there are a lot of great players in this class that I do want to draft. So I want more draft capital. Going to be trading back here with the Eagles all the way to pick number 20. But they're also giving me a second round pick at number 52, as well as a fourth round pick just for number nine. Let's do it. And now at pick number 20, I had my eyes on Jose. Jose Evans looks like a really good safety, although I did private work out a safety in the um, in the offseason there. Harvey Merriweather, all the way round two to three projection, looks decent. B zone coverage, but look at those ratings. Pretty solid all around, as well as a good combine. Did we double dip with safety? I'm not too sure. Or did we just take the guy in the first round? But I also had my eyes on Christopher Jeffrey, of course, who you guys saw. He looks so good. 80% scouted now with B-man catching press C zone there. 6-2 corner out of Ole Miss. Ratings look really good. Really good with great acceleration, agility, good change of direction, elite jumping, good speed, good strength, combine. Very, very good as well. Could, could I potentially get both? I mean, that's that's definitely the dream here. We have a lot of draft capital in case we want to trade up now as well. But So Jeffrey is about 16 down the board here. I believe we have picked 37 in the second round. So if worse comes to worse, hopefully we can trade up for him. Right now, I think I'm going to go with the safe option. That is Jose Evans, the safety out of Auburn here. We need safety help really bad here. And he looks like the best one available. He put up some really good numbers in the combine there. First and bench press, solid 40-yard um, dash as well. His ratings don't blow you through the roof. Roof, but I think they're solid. I think he's a good player overall. He should have a good development trait, hopefully, as well. I'm definitely praying for that. A tackle, B player reckon awareness. Jose Evans is hidden development, thankfully. As you can see, they're high 80s in just about every athletic rating there. And 22 years old, out of Auburn, I'm going to draft his linebacker um, teammate in the future as well. So, welcome in. He doesn't look like a Jose, though. I'll say huh? that. <laughs> Give me a boy's name that starts with the letter H. Jose. Oh no, we have picked nine because the Rams pick was number five, huh? That's crazy. I don't know why the Rams are so bad. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sim a bit here. I think I'm gonna do one last one here. I'm gonna trade up with the Jaguars. Let's go. Let's do it. Pick 41 in a fourth round pick. I believe the one that I got from the Eagles. It's close already. Add in a future six and it is accepted. We go up to number 29. And let's go ahead and take our guy who we've had eyes on since very early on to the season. Christopher Jeffrey, the man to man 6'2 cornerback to partner alongside, of course, Jeffrey Okuda. Bang. Hidden development again crazy amazing outstanding athletic ratings all across the board there with 93 acceleration 90 agility 92 change of direction 93 jumping 91 speed hit the gym though my brother hit the gym and at this pick this is when i'm starting to think about my 
Is he gone? He's gone. No way, the Auburn linebacker dude, Jeremiah Dalton, I think. Oh no, I thought he'd still be here. Hold your horses though, Colt Peters does not look too shabby himself. Their ratings are really good. Elite speed, great acceleration. Combine was decent as well. He's got B block shot, A tackling, B to D pursuit, A to C zone coverage. Linebacker out of UW, you're 23 years old. Maybe a blessing in disguise if we didn't get that guy out of Auburn because Colt Peters is not him. But hopefully he can be him in the future. <laughs> Pick nine in the third round now. Is that safety gone? Yeah, he's gone, but guess what? I got a little sleeper for you guys. Way later on, he goes by the name of Devin Haynes. We went ahead and private worked out him. He's a day three projection, and he looks like a really solid linebacker here. Out of Boise State with B pursuit, tackle, A zone coverage. A little undersized at 5'11", yes, but his combine ratings, his ratings in general, not too bad. Not too bad for a day three projection, especially definitely worth the gamble a awareness too he should be a decent rating can he be a good development trait he might just be hidden development still 21 years old as well extremely raw super super young we can mold him into an absolute animal welcome to detroit draft recap time and how did we do 74 overall is carl nash jose evans the safety we took 75 overall but look who was the highest rated christopher Jeffrey, the eye, the guy that we had our eyes set on from very early on, 76 overall, Peter 72, Devin Haynes 72 later on as well, not bad. How is our guy Carl Nash looking though? Number 10 there on the jersey, I like it, 90 throw power, 80 deep and medium, 85 short, so his accuracy is quite nice coming out, and 88 throw on run too. Okay, we could definitely work with Mr. Carl Nash here, not bad at all. Of course, his athletic ratings are super good too, so he's gonna be fun. Go ahead and check out the class as a whole. The number one guy overall was 79 overall. He was the highest in the um, in the draft class as well. Colin Sanders, huh? Right tackle at number one. Crazy the Patriots were the number one pick as well. Not X-Factor, but is superstar development. Still haven't seen an X-Factor O-line this year. Tight end, number 14 to the Panthers. They're 77 overall. We had a running back in the second round, Ron Irving. Looks like a really good receiver to add on to Waddle and Tyreek freaking Hill now. Gabe Beekman also 76 overall. Steve Oliver was another guy I had my eyes on. Only normal dev, though. I want my guy all day. Oh, wow. Harvey Merriweather. There he is. 76 overall. The safety that I wanted. He went so early. 10 in the second round. He was around 2-3 to three projection, to be fair. But goes to the Jets there very early on. And he is superstar dev. Dang. What pick was I? He went pick number 10 in the second round. We had pick 20 because we traded up to get Christopher Jeffrey. Dang it, man. If we could have got him there, that would have been incredible. And then also curious, who took the linebacker that I wanted? What was his name? Like Jeremiah something? There he goes to the Dolphins at pick 13. He's actually 75 overall hidden dev as well. If I could have got him and Merriweather, man, this would have been an A-plus draft. He is only start of element to be fair, but the guy that I chose instead of him is normal. So that sucks. Please just don't go. Woohoo! <laughs> And before we go ahead and check out the squad, of course, we saved ourselves 50 staff points to go ahead and reveal one of our hidden developments. And let's, of course, do the QB, Carl Nash. And we traded up to number two, and he is superstar development. We would, That was kind of anticlimactic. I was like, he's normal. But no, it's Jared Goff. Superstar development for Carl Nash is awesome to see. But here is the squad for year number two. The offense kind of remains the same. And we're just going to give Carl Nash the keys to the team. Now, hopefully, he can build some chemistry with Amon Ra, DeAndre Swift, Jameson Williams, superstar development, TJ Hawkinson now as well. It's a good offense. Honestly, built really well. We brought back Jamal Williams. O-line is still really good, too. So, And then defense, of course, we brought in guys like Ronnie Harrison, Jude. Jr. and Desmond King to be CB as well. I'm going to make Jeff Okuda the CB1 for sure. I might even be tempted to make Jeffrey number two. I think I'm going to do it. Desmond King can play in the slot as well, so that should be fine. Jose Evans is going to start over Tracy Walker just because of the upside. Haynes is middle linebacker one already. I love it. Specialist, and we got Amon Raw in the slot. Of course, Swift at third down back. Jamal Williams power back. Desmond King, as I mentioned, in the slot. Hutch, Anzarike, and McNeil, and Akwara there on the D-line. And then Haynes and Malcolm Rodriguez at sub linebacker. Playbooks and scheme are keeping the absolute same. We're going to rock with it for at least another season here, see how it does. But if it does bad, then next year we can change some things up mid-season mark for year number two we are one in five not great rookie qb though can you blame us i don't know that's that's rough not the start we wanted but you know we're still a young team so these high draft picks are going to come in handy for us this season and 
Why? Oh my god, Jared Goff was starting. Why? Why? Why, why, why? Can't even blame a rookie. Jeffrey is only... Why did they change everything up, bro? Nah, man. Haynes only starred too, but what is going on? The specialist... Oh my god, this game. <laughs> yeah, Carl Nash literally has played about one snap. 16 yards is all he's done this year. That is so frustrating, bro. A terrible start of the season. One in five. The fans are not mad when you go to the games. All you hear is, we want Nash. We want Nash. At the midseason mark, we're going to go ahead and make that change. He is now the new starting QB of this team, and a new chapter is here. Contracts, though, won't forget this time because we got TJ Hawkinson. We got DeAndre Swift. We got Jeff Akuda. We got Jonah Jackson. We have some big, heavy hitters here and some core pieces to our team. I want all of them back. Honestly, Hawkinson really isn't asking for too much here. Let's make it a five-year deal as well. He's 91 overall, superstar development, and is happy to rejoin. DeAndre Swift wants little to nothing to do with us. Resign interest is literally at an all-time low. So we're probably gonna have to make it a player friendly deal. It's really not the biggest deal as well. I'm gonna bump it up a ton, honestly, because I think DeAndre Swift is that good. 86 overall as well. How much more do you need? Jeff Okuda has about the same interest as DeAndre Swift, so that's kind of tough. But once again, not asking for much at all. I will be happy to give him a very friendly player deal. Seven years on it as well. That's a good offer. Okuda, welcome back. And Jonah Jackson, who's still quite young at 26 years old, 80 overall, star development as well. I'm gonna just do the player friendly deal for five years here. He's actually happy to stay. Shout out to him. Oh my god, this division is so cracked too. The third place team is the Packers. And they're four and two, bro. That's insane. I'm gonna go to week 11 though. Okay, L versus the Niners. But guess what? We put up 38 points. And for Carl Nash's first game, you cannot be mad about that. He also gets us a breakout wide receiver. Is it going to be Amon Ross St. Brown again or maybe Jameson? It's Amon Ross St. Brown again. Second chance. Week nine against the four and three Green Bay Packers. They do beat us 33 28. We are putting up points though, which I cannot be mad about. Amon Ross. What I tell you, coach, I said one of the best players on this team, and I think I proved it out there. Superstar development for Amon Ross St. Brown. That is amazing. His first two games, and he gets a breakout, and he completes the breakout. I wouldn't want to have it any other way. Jameson was ready going in this week, but things didn't go his way. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Why is Ronnie Harrison on the back of your jersey? Week 10 against the Saints. We win. 28-21. Nice. Nelson Winter is the number one guy in this class. He looks nuts. He's a QB, though. His ratings are unreal. Great to elite almost everywhere. Good to great at the very worst. As you can see, his key ratings, A deep, short, under pressure. He's 6'4", improviser out of Alcorn State, out of all places, but just 21 years old. I'm not going to go him. We already got our guy, but if this guy's generational, I'm going to be a little mad. I'm going to be a little mad. Matthew Millard is going to be my first focus player. He's B man, A to C zone, B press as well. He looks really good. 6'2". Byron Baldwin, middle. Okay, hold up. What is going on here? These, <laughs> these three dudes have the same exact picture. Switch it up, Madden. Switch it up a little bit, will you? Byron Baldwin, though, looks really good as a linebacker. Um, Round 1 to 2 projection out of TCU there. And then my third one, I'm going to go with Condre Webb, a defensive tackle out of LSU. A top five talent here. Um, we definitely need help in that department. So if we can get him, that would be great. Most likely no playoffs for us this year. But you know what? It's our first year with a rookie QB. 4-13. and 13, I'm not even mad, honestly. Stats offensively 31st almost dead last there defense though was dead last what happened like what happened i didn't change anything carl nash though not bad at all over 3,000 yards 23 touchdowns to 10 interceptions is a decent ratio as a rookie there of course jared goff vultured um his first half stats there which kind of sucks but it's okay we got him involved and he did okay swift once again it was all right 950 yards over four carry this year seven touchdowns jamal williams once again with 12 there amon ross st brown of course the new superstar man puts up over 1100 11 touchdowns for him as well josh reynolds broke a thousand nine touchdowns kind of annoying because he was in the slot for the first half so jameson williams stats aren't too great which sucks hawkinson was decent devin haynes leads the way for tackles made with 137 tfls very low this year i don't know why it was so good last year but now it's back to reality onzerike 13 12 for hutchinson there but he did get himself 10 and a half sacks once again so back to back seasons with over double digits aguara with seven but other than that no real pressure at all. Interceptions, Jose Evans with three, as well as Jeff Okuda, Devin Haynes two, and then one for these three. MVP goes to Lamar Jackson, leading the Ravens to a 14-3 record. Roquan Smith, who we tried to nab in free agency, wins Defensive Player of the Year, which kind of sucks. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Parker Mort, Brandon Sarah, this was the other QB, I believe. Carl Nash was number three, though. If he played the whole season, I think he wins that. I honestly think he does. Defensive Rookie of the Year, Devin Haynes. 
Now we're talking Jose Evans gets in there as well, as well as Christopher Jeffrey, all three of our boys. Definitely a disappointing year, but you know, rookie QB, we're still gelling. We're building that chemistry next season. I think we're going to be the final product. Hopefully, maybe a year after that, but offensively, no Devies we got. Of course, we saw Amon Ross St. Brown go up to Superstar. Swift remains the same. Jameson still a star as well, and Superstar for Carl Nash. Defensively, though, ooh, Devin Haynes, I believe, goes up. Jose Evans, though, did he either go up to Superstar, or was he actually Superstar? He went up to Superstar, so he was a star, and he went up to Superstar. That's how that works. Yeah, development rate increased. Love to see it, and our rookies are very good. With Carl Nash, Jose Evans, and Devin Haynes going up to Superstar now, I believe, after winning that Defensive Rookie of the Year. Yup, Defensive Rookie of the Year plus Superstar Dev. Super Bowl winners are the Dallas Cowboys, smacking the Ravens and the MVP, Lamar Jackson. 42-19 there. Super Bowl MVP goes to Dak Prescoot. Back at the contracts here, and we definitely would love to get DeAndre Swift back. Let's go ahead, do player-friendly. I don't even know. It was kind of a bit already. Do I do double 4.5 for six years? He's an 87 now, still just 25 years old. Of course, I've mentioned how much I do love DeAndre Swift. So I definitely will be tagging him for the foreseeable future. 17 mil, I don't care. Aquara, Josh Reynolds, Charles Harris, Quintus Cephas, y'all can walk. We got 76 mil to play around with. So let's go crazy. Free agency and we got Nick. Frickin' Bosa, Derrick Henry, 299s here, Tristan Wirfs, Justin freaking Herbert, Rashawn Gary's not on the Packers anymore, Miles Jack is Superstar X Factor, Hollywood Brown, 88, Michael Pittman, 87, Gabe Davis, 87, as well as Ayuk and Tyler Boyd, ton of receivers here, Legereus Sneed, Daniel Hunter, there are some incredible names here, a superstar, Xavier McKinney, Jalen Hurts, John Johnson here as well, wow, this is Mackay Becton, this is one of the most stacked free agency classes I've ever seen. I'm definitely interested in adding in another receiver. Josh Reynolds got way too many touches last year. Marquise Brown does have some interest. Gabe Davis, Ayuk as well. Corey Davis and Mooney actually have a ton of interest there. No offers for him as well. But actually no offers for these guys as well. I'm going to go for Gabe Davis. He's the youngest one out of the bunch in the same rating. Does want a hefty deal. But you know what? We're not paying too many people right now. So let's go ahead and let it fly. Now I definitely want to make a splash here. We got 55 mils still left over. And I want either Rashawn Gary or Nick Bosa. Rashawn Gary wildly has zero teams interested in him. Nick Bosa has only one. He is a 99 overall as well. Of course, he wants a boatload of money, but we're not paying too many people. Of course, I could actually um do something with Jared Goff as well to even get more money. You know what? Let me try to do something. <laughs> I forgot we still had him, man. He's probably eating up an absolute chunk. 26 mil we can get if we release Jared freaking goofball. You served your time well here. You mentored Carl Nash. See you later. Take me or give me that 26 mil all day long, bro. 14 mil for Taylor Decker. 9 mil for Halapula Vati Vitae. Yeah, I, I aced that name and I'm sorry, but that's going to be the last time I'm saying your name because I am releasing you and we're getting 9 mil in cap space. And now we have ourselves 88.6 mil to spend. Nick Bosa. I'm giving you the absolute world. Player-friendly deal, seven-year deal. I, I don't have to bump that up, do I? It's good enough. <laughs> are we still not first? The Jets are ahead of us. Okay, okay, bring it on then. Some massive players here, Nick Bosa, Gabe Davis, Grover Stewart, Kenneth Murray, who is a superstar of moment, and Mitch Wisnowski. Let's go ahead and evaluate the offers. If my left stick decides to work, contracts reviewed, everybody's gone, but Kenneth Murray, who we still are number one on, my signings, Nick Bosa's not there, but we did get Gabe Davis, Grover Stewart, Mitch Wichnowski, but Nick Bosa went to the freaking Jets, huh? Okay. However, if I'm not mistaken, all these names are still here. Henry Worfs, but Rashawn Gary is the one we're looking for. He has little to no interest in rejoining us, but he's going to be a lot, a lot cheaper than um, Nick Bosa was. So let's go ahead and just do a neutral deal and bump it up myself. Maybe 13 and a half would be fine for five years. And you know what? Maybe a blessing in disguise because Nick Bosa would have eaten up a lot of the cap room. What is it worth it though? Probably. Bryce Hall is chilling here. He is very interested in joining us and has no, um, no teams interested in him as well. I'm just going to give him a neutral deal. If we could have four really corners, I mean, that would be great. Rashawn Gary and Bryce Hall and Kenneth Murray are now all here. Let's go ahead. Evaluate. Rashawn Gary, unfortunately, has not accepted, but we are still the only offer for whatever reason. Rashawn Gary is so, so good. We now get Bryce Hall and Kenneth freaking Murray. Last but not least, to finish off the masterpiece, 
Rashawn, uh, you're killing my vibe here, all right? Everything's going so well. I just need one more thing. One more thing, Rashawn, and it is four. He is gone. We were the only one, though, right? It is. He's here. He's here changing teams in her division in the NFC North. Rashawn Gary is now a Detroit Lion, and what a freaking free agency we just had. After the draft we had last year, our team is really starting to come together. And tell you what, I might not be done yet. I want to just crack out this defense. Xavier McKinney is gone, but John Johnson is still here. Has green interest in us as well, so he would be um, very likely to join us. Let's bump up the deal a tiny bit and see if we can get him, because safety depth, DB depth, can't have enough. John Johnson evaluated. And he is a Detroit Lion as well. Our defense just went from 0 to 100. Our offense, we got a franchise QB superstar going into his sophomore year. We're going to be scary next year, bro. Bro, this QB, great acceleration, agility, jumping, elite change of direction, strength, throw power. Oh my god, he is ridiculous. I don't have him too much scouted because obviously we have our guy already, but... Dude, is he generational? Like, <laughs> those are some ridiculous stats. Do I dare even put a private workout on him? I'm honestly so tempted. Quandre Webb looks like an animal, though. Look at those stats. B, uh, block shed, finesse moves, power moves, as well as A, tackling. Oh my goodness, does he look like him? Oh my, yeah, even more so. Look at those ratings. Great, elite, great, 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 elite. Oh my, he might be generational. I'm going to do him again so we can get him 100% and just, just so we know. So I'm doing web. I did a right guard. That looks decent. You know what? Last one. I'm going to throw it on Nelson Winter. I'm just, I, I want to know. Um, it's not going to be 100%, but I want to see more. Go ahead and start the NFL draft. Texans are the number one pick. We're actually pick number two. I forgot how trash we were, even though we're looking real good now after next season. Imagine that guy wins the Heisman as well. Goes to Brenner, who is no brainer. He's a quarterback. Sure, I don't know who that is. <laughs> Brenner? This guy? Round two to who? But we do have Nelson Winter 90% scouted now, and he has A deep, short, under pressure, B medium, A awareness, A throw and run. Oh my god, B play action. <laughs> oh, this dude looks unbelievable, bro. But hold up, what was the defensive tackle top five? He is top five. We're going to take the defensive tackle then. We're just going to play it safe, although I would love to get Nelson Winter. We do already have our guy. We're riding with our guy, Carl Nash. So it's a, it's a tough one to, to give up, but <laughs> we got to do it. Texans, number one overall pick. Don't. Oh, my God. He's still there. Why is he still there? He is staring at me. He really is. But you know what? Quandre Webb seems like a generational maybe um, player at defensive tackle as well. Crazy statistics, ratings, combine, killed it. Everything looks good. We know he's a top five talent in this class. Of, I mean, look at that. Oh my God. His lowest stat is a C stamina injury we don't care about. Generational. Next, Aaron Donald. Please, thank you. We'll take it. 95 strength. He's still just 21 years old as well. That's the craziest part. Welcome, Quandre Webb. Him, Aiden Hutchinson, Rashawn Gary, DB Room is looking amazing as well. Let's go. I'm happy. I'm happy with our guy, but I really, oh my God, how is he still here? Nelson Winter, there he goes. He's going to go to the freaking Saints as well. They're going to be a powerhouse. Round two now. Let's go ahead and take, did he, he's gone? Okay, well, the um the right guard that I was looking for is not here anymore. <laughs> but you know what? That's fine. I'm going to go with Daniel Stratton here, who has pretty good ratings all around. Really good combine, though. First in bench press, 40-yard dash. Looks like a decent right guard. Top of the second round here. Agile, 6'5", out of Florida. Is only normal dev. Oh, you know what I never checked out? I never checked out that linebacker that I private worked out very early on in week 11. I think I'm just going to take Jesse Roseman here um, in round three. Actually, let me look around a little more. Oh, my. Because, because a man like Dean Teague can be chilling here in round three to four projection with elite acceleration, agility, change of direction, and speed. Holy crap. Dean Teague looks like that guy. Out of Boise State, pass coverage, archetype. Only normal development, unfortunately. Man, he was looking good. He still could be good. <laughs> it is time for some draft recaps. And Quandre Webb is a 79. How could I complain? How could I complain? Stratton's actually 75, so we'll take that. Teague, 71. I sim this pick. We got a 70. Hold up. I simmed it. But a 75 overall running back in the fourth round. Carlos Clements can be the Jamal Williams replacement next year. Nice. But you guys know what's on my mind. It's that winter guy. He is. He's only 77. Okay. I was hoping he was going to be like. I, I thought he was going to be like 84 overall and just crazy as is. 94 throw power. His accuracy is pretty good. Throw and run 86. 
Obviously, his ratings um, for athletic ratings are pretty solid as well. But let's go ahead and, of course, oh, he's only normal. He's only normal. I was going to go check out his dev trait. I just saw it last night. He's normal. Holy crap. Imagine I took him. That would have been the biggest fumble of the century, bro. Thank God we got ourselves Quandra Webb, who is the number one player in the class and look at this Roy Calhoun actually is second he might be better than that winter guy as it looks like the Jets are moving on from Zach Wilson okay he's only star though Winters was the third highest overall a few safeties here I want to know that um what's his name that that right guard that I wanted hold up isn't that our guy holy crap he's all the way up here <laughs> Stratton's actually 75 up here as well so you know what maybe it's a good thing was it this guy no it was him it was Devin Hall he's 74 overall went 32 to the Dallas Cowboys he was the guy I had private worked out he looked really good really good insane ratings as well only star it's better than our guy but our guy is a rating better so i guess it evens out heading into year number three now and you guys know the way there's only one man we are going to reveal it's quandre webb bro i cannot believe that qb was only normal i was so close to taking it could you imagine bro in another world and i fumbled that instead of getting quandre webb who is superstar development we will take that all day let's actually keep him at dt2 here's the team though for year number three carl nash the keys are now officially yours. No more Jared Goff breathing down your neck or the, any of that nonsense. They are yours. You got Swift. You got a superstar St. Brown, Jameson Williams. We brought in a big money signing Gabe Davis, 88 overall. Hawkinson still here at a 93. O-line is still phenomenal with the addition of Stratton, 75 as well. And then for the defense, we're switched up to a 4-3 now. I feel like that just works better for the players that we got. Let's make Okuda, CB number one, although we do have Bryce Hall now here. We move um evans back out to strong safety his original position because of course we brought in john johnson now we got tracy walker behind him ronnie harrison as a backup kenneth murray also now here grover stewart and of course the biggest one rashawn gary at left and 92 overall this team looks like it could do some damage especially as we got sam brown double swift here jeffrey's actually going to be in the slot this year let's try him out there hutch quandre webb of course for sean gary with haynes kenneth murray double superstar there playbooks are changed double kc base four three vertical zone run let's go before i sim though let's um change carl nash's face let's give him one of the new faces where are they at like this one why, why does he look so small though 20 oh my, he looks so weird we'll, we'll do it though <laughs> oh my god that is the longest face i've ever seen but you know what that's just carl nash we love him for who he is <laughs> week seven midway point new regime new squad the detroit lions are five and two joint top with the green bay packers in the top of the nfc north did i even have a hidden dev i had like my d tackle right I don't think we had anybody else though, so don't go to check that out. Let's go ahead and do some contracts. Amon, why do you not want to rejoin us at all? Penny Sewell as well, Swift too, because we had to franchise tag him. They have no interest. Why? Gino. I'm right back. Let's go. I feel like if we wait to the end of the year, it'll go up because we're going to be in the playoffs. We're going to be contending. We have a franchise QB and all that good stuff. But at the same time, these players are still young. They're going to keep developing up to a higher overall. So they're going to want more money at the end of the year. I might just try to get a deal done now. I'm on raw 15 mil. What's better? Yeah, wait, waiting till the end might be the move. I'm just going to do player friendly. Yeah, they don't want to join me. Wow, Decker kind of wants a big deal for being just 81 overall. And now at the age of 30, I'm going to wait on him as well. We might sign nobody here. But of course, let's go ahead and sim to the playoffs where we should comfortably make it. Huh? Did we make it? I don't know. I don't know what our standings are. They're not even there. Number one seed. Oh my God, we went 30. And four, number one seed in the NFC. Are you kidding me? We actually lost week one against the Seahawks 20 to 28. There, who even is their QB? Because we got Geno Goat Smith now on, his own on our team. Teddy Bridgewater, Carl Nash did not have good performance there, but then bang, Vikings, Eagles, Rams, Saints, Texans, big, big um, win streak there. But then we lost to the Packers, the Jets, the Cardinals. But we ended off hot with team with wins against the Titans, Niners, Packers, Jaguars, Vikings, Colts, Bears. Huge win streak to end off the season. We're getting hot at the right time. Can we make some noise in the playoffs? Number one in the NFC is awesome, though. Offensive yards 21st. 
Really, was our defense just amazing? Our defense was more than amazing. Number one in the league. All right, Carl Nash, 21st in the league offensively, but that is a really good year. 4,400 yards there, 33 touchdowns to just nine picks. Carl Nash, do your thing. The Andre Swift finally broke over 1,000 yards. He gets himself 1,200, 4.1 a carry, as well as eight rushing touchdowns. Mm, not the craziest stats here. I was expecting a little more. Jameson, though, 1,000 yards, the only 1,000-yard receiver. Eight touchdowns for him, 12 for TJ Hawkinson, 922 yards, and then St. Brown and Gabe Davis only with 800 kind of disappointing but hopefully you know obviously Carl Nash is still a low overall so Devin Haynes 103 tackles made for him leads the way 22 tackle for losses for the rookie superstar Quandre Webb 17 for Rashawn Gary 16 Grover Stewart 15 Aiden Hutchinson and the sack numbers are unreal got three people in the double digits 13 for Gary 12 and a half for Hutch 10 for Quandary Webb in the middle interceptions three for Akuda Bryce Hall and then one for a lot of people and yeah looking at my team ranks our offense definitely wasn't too great 26 in points per game but look at that defense we allowed just 17.3 points per game number one in the league pass yards per game second rush yards per game number one and and we are gonna have and huh? we and we are going to have ourselves, and we are going to have ourselves, hello? Um, okay, I guess so. Are the lines just cursed like that? We're never gonna get our first playoff win, huh? What is this? <laughs> um, okay. Guess I'm gonna dashboard. One eternity later. Um, are we good? Okay, we're good. We got the Packers, it looks like, in the divisional round here. I'm not sure what happened. They go nine and eight. Rogers that cannot be there anymore, so I don't really know who it even is. Can we get our first playoff win of the video? And the first Lions win in a long, long, long time. We do. And look at what we have next. It's the LA Rams. Matthew Stafford. Coming to Detroit to play in the NFC Conference Championship. Words he probably didn't think he would say. Can we beat them? Go to the Super Bowl in just year three? We act. We're in the freaking Super Bowl in year three. We smacked them. 35-16. We now are going to be playing Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. And it is going to be good. Oh my god. Josh Allen wins MVP though. 13-4 Bills. Where is our guy though? How is he not in here? That is criminal. Coach of the year? Who? We are number two, though. I don't know how I'm not number one. Okay, Cooper Cup is one offensive player every year. You know what? I love it because, yeah, I have him on my fantasy team. Donald again. You guess what? Guess who kicked the Rams out of the playoffs? Winter wins offensive rookie of the year, but defensive rookie of the year? Bang. Quandra Webb. Who else? Okay, surely he's in here, though, right? Number 10? We had 33 touchdowns, 13 and 4 record, 9 picks. That is so disrespectful. Oh! Oh, wait. Daniel Stratton, number 3. The 75 overall normal rookie gets in here. We will be upgrading him to star development for finishing top five. It's been a while since I've done a little bet or a little online row, but it feels good. Let's go ahead and check out some Devies, though. We should have a ton. An absolute ton. Carl Nash does not go up, unfortunately. It doesn't look like we get anything on offense. Maybe Swift could have got one. I guess the stats weren't really too eye-popping, but Nash did lead us to a 13-4 and record. I mean, come on. His first full year starting as well. Defense should have a ton, though. Quandre Webb, the rookie, is now up to X-Factor. That is amazing. Why was Jose Evans not starting over Ronnie Harrison? You have got to be kidding me right now. We didn't get anything else, but Quandre Webb going up is awesome. I love it. He's got himself two skill points as well. He's number 66. That is disgusting. Let's go ahead and check out his stats, though. 85 block shed, 77 power moves, 70 finesse moves. He can do just about everything. I'm going to work on... Let's do speed rusher. Why not? Because the um, the auto upgrade will just keep doing the top ones anyway. So let's do the bottom one. Up to 79 now. Plus two finesse moves both times there. So you love to see it up to a 74. He is just so good. Thank God I went in, man. Thank God. And Daniel Stratton, I upgraded myself to start of element as well for finishing top five in the best O-line, of course, to my good old O-line rule. So shout out to him. Very excited to be in the freaking Super Bowl in just year three, though. Am I blind? No. The Chiefs are over here. Let's go ahead and check out the Chiefs, the team we're going to be playing. Of course, Patrick Mahomes, 99 overall. Kelsey is still doing his thing at 34 years of age, 97 overall. Same with Chris Jones there. Creed Humphrey, also 97. CEH, 95. Tooney, 93. Juju up to a 91 as well. Superstar Justin Kicker Reed is an X Factor now. Crazy. Trey Smith, 90. 
Their O-line looks unbelievable, but you know what? Rashawn Gary, Aiden Hutchinson, and most of all, Quan Dre Webb hopefully can penetrate them. Huh? Chiefs 88 overall, but we are 88 overall. Ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be the Super Bowl of the ages. Both teams evenly matched. Mahomes, Carl Nash, I know who I'm taking. And let's get the first quarter of the way here in Arlington, Texas. We drive down, get the first points of the game to go up 3-0 defensively. Hold the Chiefs to none there at the end of the first quarter, but they drive down and get a touchdown, of course. We're driving down, though. No touchdowns yet, but two field goals for us. And there's our first touchdown of the game going up 13-7 at the end of the first half. Second half, third quarter on its way. The Chiefs drive down, get themselves seven to go up by one, and the fourth quarter is on the way. Chiefs have the ball at about midfield here. And they're getting a few yardage every single time already onto the 11. And on a fresh set of downs, first and 10, what can Patrick Mahomes do? Right through the middle to Juju there. Second and four on the six now. Shotgun formation. Mahomes looking to pass the ball again. Their O-line's putting in work. That's got to be a pick. That's got to be a pick. 90, why did you swat it? Mahomes threw it literally right at him. It was kind of in his blind spot, so... I can, I can see where he's coming from, but man, that really should have been a pick. Even maybe a pick six. Third and four now, though. Mahomes through the middle. We get him stopped very short of the first down marker. Fourth and inches on the two. Andy Reid decides to kick it in a one-point game. I guess they could go up four, which is nice, but with that offense, with that O-line, with that freaking QB... You got to go for that, right? You got to. But you know what? It gives our offense a chance now to go up. So let's go. And let's go ahead and see it our first time seeing Carl Nash in the flesh. Shotgun formation dropping back. Absolute bomb. Might have been a throw to sack, though. Unfortunately, or luckily for us, it wasn't a pick. Carl Nash not doing too much. Only 15 to 25, 130 yards there. One touchdown, of course, for our entire offense. They're blitzing. Yeah, not a great drive here, but we are now in empty. We're now in third and ten. We're trusting Carl Nash. He steps up in the pocket, and he's going to be getting sacked for a loss of five yards here. A quick, very, very quick three and out for our offense, which is very tough. We need to hold the Chiefs to three again. We cannot allow a touchdown. Chiefs offense back on the field here. We get a huge stop on CEH in the backfield for a gain of zero. I think that was Rashawn Gary. Not too sure. I, how does he not have a superstar? Honestly, Rashawn Gary is so good. Second and 10 now, though. Shock formation. Handing this one off again, and we are all over that. Let's go, D. Loss of three yards on that one. Setting up a third and 13 for our defense. Mahomes drops back. It was honestly a great pass to Kelsey, but our defense came through. An amazing pass breakup. We had numbers over there. We knew his first read was always going to be Kelsey. We made sure to put numbers on him. And it's a quick three and out now for the Chiefs. We need our offense to step it up, though. We really do. Carl Nash, come on, baby. Four minutes and 30 seconds to go in the freaking Super Bowl. Down four. That's a great pass. That's all we need. You don't need to play hero ball. Just take the yards every single time. Let's drive down methodically. Let's waste time. And hopefully get a touchdown. If we don't get a touchdown, we're screwed, though. Second and one. Four minutes to go here. Handing it off to none other than DeAndre Swift. Easy first down. Do still have all our timeouts as well, so time is definitely not a problem. But here we go. Shotgun formation. First and ten. Dropping back. Carl Nash. Hero ball. Hero ball. You might be doing too much. He passed it over there, and there was, all I saw was two Chiefs players. So I thought that was really going to be a pick. Second and ten now. Carl Nash. Oh, my God. That was very scary. DeAndre Swift, though, does well. Great concentration catch, setting up a third and very manageable four yards in empty. Under three minutes to go. Carl Nash, what do you got for me, baby? What do you got for me, baby? Are they open? What is that? What is that? And we're punting. Oh, my God. I swear we had both the crossing routes there wide open. He just kept looking downfield. He wanted to get the big yardage. Just take the first down, Carl. This is what's going to happen, though, when you have a second-year quarterback and his first year starting in the Super Bowl. He's going to make some of these mistakes, man. But the defense came through when we needed them last time. We need one more stop here. Play action. Mahomes. Nate, that's what I'm talking about. Why can't we just do that? Two-minute warning is now gone. Chiefs have a second and two. We still have all three timeouts, so we should be okay here. They're running it, of course. Get the first down. We get a stop, and now we've got to start. We gotta start working with the clock. Handing it off again. Clyde Edwards Ehler through the middle. I don't know how he got through. Second and three now. Just one timeout to go. Lady guys, just all out blitz. That's a great tackle. That is a great tackle. Third and two now. No timeouts remaining. This is a spot where Andy Reid would throw the ball. I won't even lie. He did it with Chad Henney. He's gonna do it again here. Patrick Mahomes to seal the game. 
it's out of bounds. Oh my god, Sky Moore got pretty open there. But the defense got through. And we have one last chance here to win the Super Bowl. It's in our hands, it's in the hands of our QB and our offense. Can we come through? Starting on our own 16. A minute 30 to go. You, you didn't even give me a chance to finish my thought. Carl. <laughs> Carl. You didn't even give me a chance to finish what I was saying, bro. You just threw a... What even was that play calling? Why are three of our receivers running into each other right there? Yeah, that wasn't great. Um, Yeah, I, I, I think we lost. <laughs> bro, are you kidding me? We had the chance to really drive down and do something special there, but in K instead... We throw a pick on the very first freaking play. You've got to be kidding me. And what a game. It was a super defensive game as Mahomes didn't even have 200 yards. Two touchdowns for him. No picks. Carl Nash, only one touchdown and a very, very bad and costly pick at the end there. 17 for 31 for only 146 yards though. I need you, Carl. I really do. Clyde, 75 yards under four carry there. Swift was all right as well. Receiving-wise, Kelsey had the most receptions for them as well as a tud. Clyde edwards Elair, Amon Ross St. Brown at 30 yards. Hawkinson had our one and only touchdown. MVS got the other one there. Yeah, we just... We couldn't move the ball. We couldn't move the chains at all. Devin Haynes led the way for tackles made with 10 there. Tackle for losses. Two for Haynes. Webb. Chris Jones also had two. And then sacks went to Justin Hollins and Chris Jones. We had no pressure on the edge. And Nick Bowen was the um, the savior. They're getting that pick at the last second. That is very disappointing. But you know what? We're still in just year three. The future is looking very, very bright here. So I ain't even mad. But at the same time, I'm kind of mad. Because I want to win the Super Bowl. You know, Super Bowl MVP goes to Patrick Mahomes. Could have been Nick Bowen as well. But yeah, man, they beat us by four points. Our offense just kind of got figured out. Back at the contract. And nobody still wants to rejoin me. We just went to the Super Bowl. I will give you all the money you want. We have 132 mil in available cap space. Why do you guys not want to join? So Panay Sewell, team as franchise QB, the Super Bowl chase, we're league favorites, but the biggest one is a mentor at position. No players have tagged. You are 91 overall. Why do you need a mentor? I don't know. I'm going to go sign one though, so it just helps that cause. Wait, what does Amon Ra need though? No income tax, mentor at position as well. Okay, so I need a receiver and an O-line. Swift, historic champion. Why does it matter if we're historic champions if we could be champions in the near future? Like, what? Oh, I can't even sign free agents yet. Oh, no. Dude, I cannot afford to lose any of these guys. Go ahead and do hometown discount. Just get that all the way. It basically gives us a 5% discount on players under 90 overall. But I don't even think they're, they're over 90, aren't they? Yeah, they're literally all above 90. Oh, my goodness. Uh, do I do super team friendly on all of them? That's going to be so much money. Like, look at Panay Sewell's deal here. You know what? We just went to the Super Bowl. I'm ready to pay the team. I'm happy to sign. Thank you, Panay, you greedy freaking bat. Amon Raw. I mean, player friendly. He wants an absolute boatload as well. I'm going to make it 15 mil. I want to pay the team. I want to keep this core. How do you not accept that, Amon? We have a ton of money, though. 109 mil still left. Swift. I mean, very player friendly he isn't even that much still for how good he is honestly welcome back deandre swift fair to say we're going to be tagging him on ross and Brown for 27 mil oh my god and then decker and grover stewart i might look to bring grover stewart back you know 84 overall just a one-year deal nothing crazy he's back decker i'm going to move on from though he just he wants a little too much now Ooh, aleem mcneil is here as well 78 overall i actually love him i love him as a backup for our team behind Quandre webb as well so we want him back for agency we got about 60 mil to spend and mike williams is the top guy definitely different from what we saw last year justin reed jeremy chin don't really need safeties though you know Trey Smith could be fun. I don't really even know, though. Evan McPherson, we're looking to bring in, as well as Shadobi, Owuzie, Harrison Phillips, who's up to superstar dev, and then David Long, just to be a backup. We're kind of just rounding off the squad here, getting some pieces that would just help out. My left stick is so broken. The only one that hasn't accepted is McPherson, but we get Phillips and David Long. Unfortunately, no Owuzie, but that's, that's all right. Would definitely like a fourth corner, though. Maybe we go for oh, Des oh, Desmond King. We can just bring him back. Honestly, he has he's really interested in rejoining. And nobody left here. We get McPherson and Desmond King to rejoin us. Nothing too crazy in free agency, but I think I'm pretty happy with that. Pick number 31 now in the first round. Of course, we did lose Taylor Decker in free agency, so we need to replace him with a new blindside protector. Michael Evans looks to be the man we're going to be getting here. A awareness, impact block, pass block, run block. Decent, 21 years old, out of Oklahoma State. We're one of his top fits. It's a match made in heaven.
I meant hell. Second round pick now, we also lost Tracy Walker in fridge. See, so let's go ahead and get some depth at safety with Tavarius Golson here, who don't look too shabby himself. It's okay. It's okay. We don't need anybody to bang. We just need some depth. We just need some people to help out the first guys. So third round, I'm going to go Josh Fullerton, a center in case we need a center for the future. Do I even want to check my draft for you? <laughs> 73, 73, 65. Nice. Let's check out the class real quick though. Any generational players? No. 78 running back. This class was dumpster. Yeah, not good at all. Year number four, I believe now. The team's the team. Ain't nothing changed too much. Obviously, we're off a nice little Super Bowl run. Unfortunately, couldn't win it, but we will run it back. Of course, we do have a new left tackle now. No more Taylor Decker, but hopefully Evans can uh, do the job here. Only 73, only normal dev, but as long as he can just give Carl Nash a few seconds, we should be fine. Everything else, though, remains the same defensively. Pretty much the same as well. Hopefully, Evans starts now. John Johnson, Quander Webb. I'm going to make our defensive tackle one now because he really is becoming one of the best defensive players in the league hutchinson gary still doing their thing akuda at cb1 is good to me specialist and nothing too much changed over here either jameson is now in the slot but everything else just like last year let's run it back and at the midway point we are four and two last year i believe we were around the same as well maybe five and two i don't really even know contracts though amon raw is back here he still has no interest in rejoining us hutch is here jameson williams grover stewart desmond king okay um let's go ahead and get that stupid mentor receiver <laughs> who is a mentor receiver maybe i'll sort by age bridge player bridge player bridge player hello nobody's a mentor bro are they gonna make me trade for a mentor receiver yes they are because apparently it's the most important thing in the freaking contract negotiations you need to have a mentor no matter if you're 97 overall it does not matter bro <laughs> i need someone who's like trash there's nobody really here they're all high overalls i need somebody to be like 60 overall who the heck has a mentor tag bro i'm actually gonna go through every single team and look for one mentor jarvis Landry. 79 overall on the Seahawks. Is it even worth it? I don't know. What do you want for Jarvis Landry? Jose Evans? Ali McNeil? What are you smoke? He's literally 32. I'll give you a future third. That's even a lot, honestly. Huh. Okay, it's not. It's just not worth it. <laughs> Amon Ra definitely wants his money. We still have a lot of money. Still 70 mil. I'm gonna. <laughs> it's gonna run out soon because I'm trying to pay everybody right now. But we're so close to that Super Bowl. Yeah, Amon Ra St. Brown is just no. Nah. Hutch, however, would love to come back. A lot of green interest. We're gonna give him seven years on that perfect deal. Let's go. Jameson actually has yellow interest, thankfully. Unlike somebody, I'm gonna bump it up to 3.8. There, could we get him back? He is back. Jameson ain't stingy. Unlike somebody. Grover Stewart, Ronnie Harrison, Desmond King. Yeah, I'll, I'll wait for the rest later. I cannot believe how big of an impact mentors at the position plays, though. Like, that's crazy. We have made the playoffs for the second straight consecutive season. 12-5, and five, not the number one seed, but that's okay. Statistically, this season, we're 17th on offense. It's not that great. Honestly, I was expecting more. The defense is so, so fire, though, ain't it? And Carl Nash, once again, did his thing. I do have a mentor at QB. I did sign Kirk Cousins there, so... We'll take it. Carl Nash, though, 4,400 yards, 37 touchdowns to just five interceptions. A very Aaron Rodgers-esque statistical season there, which is lovely. Could it be MVP? Oh, DeAndre Swift had his best year. 1,400 yards, just about under five a carry there. 4.8, 10 touchdowns for him as well. Let's go, Swift. Receiving-wise, it's Amon Ross, Stingy St. Brown, 1150 for him, 12 touchdowns. Hawkinson, seven, and then 900 yards for him. Gabe Davis, Jameson. We're not putting up the craziest of stats, I won't lie. It's a lot of mouths to feed, though, so it's very evenly spread out, I guess. Offensively, though, how fire has this side of the ball been? 119 tackles for Devin Haynes, once again leading the way there. For Sean Gary, 19 tackle for losses. 14 for Quandre Webb, 12 for Aiden Hutchinson, and these three are just... Oh, I mean, what a trio. What a freaking trio. They all three put up insane stats. 17 and a half sacks for Hutch, 13 for Webb, 12 for Rashawn Gary. They are so good together. And then interceptions, we had four people with two there and then a few people with one. In the wild card round, though, we do have the Chicago Bears, 10 and 7 inner divisional. Let's see if we can get away from them. We do 33 14. We now have the 11 and 6 Dallas Cowboys, Micah Parsons. Can we beat them? We just got absolutely ran through 35 to 7 all right that's not great seven points our team put up with a 95 offense that is 
Not good, but you know, the Cowboys are in the Super Bowl now, so maybe it's just their year. Josh Allen, back-to-back -back MVPs for him. Rodgers is still here. That's crazy. He usually retires like in one to two years. Carl Nash, number eight. Stratton again. That is superstar dev, but can I be asked to do it? I don't know. <laughs> We're deep into this now. <laughs> yeah, we uh, kind of had nothing, so that was disappointing. Carl Nash should 100% go up to superstar X Factor. I don't know how he doesn't. He remains at superstar at an 89 overall. Now nothing else on offense defensively. Nothing over here as well, really? Dude, how is Akuda not went up? Or Sean Gary even would have been nice. Yeah, literally nothing here. Nothing at all. Oh my god, did I just see that right? Yeah, the <laughs> the Cowboys just put up 59 points in the Super Bowl against the Browns as well. Who put up 35? They put up a good fight. MVP is Dak Prescott. I believe that's back-to-back -back years. Actually, no, because we made it last year. They made it in year two, though. 59 points is ridiculous, though. Um, I'm not too fussed about bringing anybody back besides Amon Ross St. Brown, of course. I'm just going to give him this deal, and I'm just going to tag him, honestly. <laughs> 30.4 mil. Yeah, there you go, Amon. Are you happy? About 50 mil to spend here in free agency. DJ Moore headlines it with Christian Kirk. Alvin Kamara, Juju, Kelsey's here. Looks like the Chiefs lost a ton of players there. Stingley is here. Superstar development as well. See what we can do. Okay, you know what I'm gonna do in free agency? I'm gonna bring in all the mentors. <laughs> you have been disconnected from the league due to inactivity. I Teron Johnson, Charles Cross, who I gave a ton of money, so um hopefully he rejoins us and then some mentors, because you got you need them. You need them. And Teron Johnson, the only one here, and we got everybody. Why did that take so long? <laughs> Teron, come on. Nobody else wants you, my guy. Thank you. <laughs> Massive trade here as we head into year five, most likely the last year. Giving away this year's first, future third, and second. Getting myself DJ Reader as well as Vaughn Bell. Two great depth pieces on the defensive side of the ball. Year number five, most likely the last season, but the team is looking the best it's ever been. Charles Cross we now have at the left tackle position. I did change the offensive playbook to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers as well. We added in guys like DJ Reader, Vaughn Bell, specifically, specifically for just depth. And it makes our team even that much better. Special is going to be looking like this if you care. I'm going straight to the playoffs. I'll see you there. Week 18, can we get another bye week? We do not. We actually have our worst record in the past three seasons. 10 and 7, still luckily top of the NFC North, but definitely not at our best. Statistically, this season we were ninth in off. Oh my god, Carl Nash. He did his thing. Why did the defense fall off? I, I don't understand. Carl Nash had more numbers, 5,200 yards, 50 touchdowns is incredible. But the picks more than quadrupled from his from his five last season all the way up to 21. Did we take this season or last season? We had a better records the last two years. So we have had 11, 50, 4.6, 14. I feel like he's just been doing that every single year. <laughs> Here we go. We put up some crazy receiver numbers now with Amon Ross St. Brown almost at 1,500. 12 touchdowns for him. 11 for Gabe Davis. 14 for Jameson Williams as they both have about 1,300 yards. They're just about. TJ Hawkinson, 800, 8 touchdowns for him. Once again, Devin Haynes leads the way for tackles made. He has been so consistently great for us. Hutch with 22 tackle for losses. Webb, 19. Gary 14, DJ Reader with 10, I believe that was, and then 15 and a half sacks for Hutch, 12 and a half for Gary, and 12 for Webb. But what did I, did it, DJ Reader have no sacks? He did not have one sack. Hello, I guess we had a ton as a team though. Haynes and Bryce Hall and J J Jose Evans with three interceptions each there. Vaughn Bell with two, but here we go. Can we make a last minute run here? We got the Vikings in the wildcard round. They're only nine and eight, second in the NFC North. There should be a battle that we win and we do 35-14. We now have the seven and 10 Niners in the divisional round, seven and 10. Three games under 500 is a little wild if you ask me, but should be a game we're winning and we do 28 to 10 and now we have the 9 and 8 giants the nfc just looks terrible if we're basing it off their records there this should be a w as well and we're back in the super bowl 49 21 we absolutely kill the giants there in the nfc conference championship and now we're back in the super bowl in year five against the 15 and 2 new york football jets huh curious to see where their team is i swear josh allen has won three mvps in a row no, oh, Nash is number nine. Yeah, just just absolutely nothing for us here. <laughs> Check out some quick Debbies, though. Let's go ahead and see Carl Nash. Does he go up after that season? 
he still doesn't, which is a little crazy, but he did have 21 picks. Mono Rossi Brown gets a mentor in Nelson Aguilar and finally goes up to Superstar X Factor. So we'll take that. Nothing else on the offense there. Defensively, Hutch finally goes up to Superstar. That is pretty cool to see. And then we get Vaughn Bell going up to Superstar as well. Or Hutch went up to X Factor. You know what I mean. Okay, though. But what I'm curious about is this New York Jets team. What are they rocking with your QB? They got Roy Calhoun. I think I remember his name. He was the top QB. And I think the class with that winter mentor dude, 98 throw power. Cannot throw deep, though. So a lot of throw power, no accuracy, but short and medium. Yeah, he's darting them up. Oh, my God. Super fast as well. The Jets have a crazy one under center. Running back, they got Brees Hall, who's a 99 overall superstar now. Fun, fun. Elijah Moore is a 99 superstar. X-Factor, Garrett Wilson, 94. DeAndre McAllister, Cumberland, 80 overall. Wow, what a team. Who's their tight end? Kendrick Sims, they have a superstar, 91 tight end. Oh my God, superstar left tackle. 88 overall, Kendrick Green at left guard, Mason Cole center. Their interior ain't great. Dylan Redunds at right guard, right tackle. Jalen McKnight, we can definitely attack him in the middle, and that's where Quandre Webb is going to be as well. John Franklin Myers, 91 overall. Of Cole, they stole Nick Bosa from me. They stole Nick Bosa from me, 99 overall, of course. Superstar X Factor and Quinn and Williams, same thing. Wow, that D line is insane. Frankie Luvu is that outside linebacker and. Bonus great. Who the heck is this? 82 overall. I don't know. I have no idea what that is. And Chenin Nwosu, a right outside linebacker. Sauce is a 92 overall. Superstar now with DJ Reed, 87 overall. But other than that, DB room is not great. Safeties, they have Harvey Merriweather as well. This is the other guy I wanted. So they have Nick Bosa. They stole Merriweather from me as well. Okay, I see how it is. A lot of storylines going into this one. The Jets are an 87 overall, though. We are a 90 freaking three can we end this video off with a lombardi the main goal can we do it go ahead and start simming away here in hard rock stadium i believe in miami we started off with the first touchdown of the game but they do tie it up at the end of the first quarter there's seven all heading into the second quarter we get a field goal very quickly thanks to evan mcpherson we go up by 10 they cut it down to Three, and then we go back up by 10 at the end of the first half. They're 24-14 going to the second half. We start with ball. We could have really iced it there if we scored, but we are now up 14 points, 31 points we have. And I believe we are on their 16 into the red zone. We could really put this game away here with seven points. Carl Nash, what do you got for me? DeAndre Swift up through the middle. It's a tough D-line to run through. Second and six now on the 12. DeAndre Swift motioning out to the left side. Carl Nash, empty formation. Out wide here, and it's a great catch right. Number 89, our backup tight end, I believe. And with the new fresh set of downs, first and goal on the four. Just run it in. Just run it in with Swift. Goes down in the end zone on the one. I swear the ball was over. He was reaching, but guess what? We're on the one now. It's a right. Let's feed him again. Maybe even do a QB sneak with Carl Nash. Second and goal. We lose six yards. That was not the move. Why would we run a toss on the one? And it's Harvey Merriweather that gets the tackle for loss as well. Wow. The safety that I had my eyes on. The Jets took him from me. Now a third and goal in the seven. Carl Nash through the middle. It's a touchdown. It is a touchdown for, I believe, Gabe Davis. Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we might have a Lombardi. We go up 20 points here. Potentially even 21. Three touchdowns. We would have to pull a Falcons to lose this one. Go ahead and sim the rest here. The Jets, huge gain right away there. And they enter our red zone already. Onto the 16, onto the eight. They cannot capitalize, though, but they do. It is a touchdown for Kendrick Sims. I believe they're tight end there, but our offense back on the field with just under five minutes to go here. The objective is to waste clock, but we're slinging that thing because we got Carl Nash. TJ Hawkinson for 20 yards onto the 29 now. We get a negative three rush, yard rush on a third and eight. We take the field goal, still up by a comfortable margin here. I believe 17 points, just have the ball back. Under two minutes to go, they still have all timeouts, but time is running out. He had a 43-yard touchdown to Elijah Moore, though. And as long as we can recover this onside kick, we will be good. And we will end this video off with a freaking Super Bowl ring. We win. Beat the Jets. 41-31 in a game with many storylines. The Detroit Lions come away victorious. Let's go. And wow, 
that was um quite the different game from our first Super Bowl where Carl Nash only had one touchdown, one pick, only had about 150 yards. This time he puts up 132.7 QBR, 29 for 40 for a 72% completion rate, 394 yards, five passing touchdowns to just one pick. Calhoun had a good game himself with three tutties, no picks, but completely outplayed by Carl Nash. Run game was pretty ugly all around here. DeAndre Swift only had 3.6 a carry, 50 yards. Brees Hall, 2.2 a carry for under 40 yards. Everybody did have a touchdown. Gabe Davis led the way for receptions with seven there, 66 yards for him, as well as two touchdowns for him. And Amon Ross St. Brown, who broke 100 yards. Hawkinson was great with 60 yards. Jameson William, all three of our receivers found the end zone this game. He had 83 yards on just three receptions. That's our deep threat, baby. And defensively, it's Rashawn Gary leading the way for tackles made with nine. They're surprising to not see Devin Haynes have more four tackle for losses for Rashawn Gary Hutchinson with two sack numbers one and a half for Gary wow he had a phenomenal game could he nab Super Bowl MVP from Carl Nash maybe not likely though <laughs> and the Super Bowl MVP is none other than the QB we drafted in the very first season QB1 Carl Nash and before we of course wrap up this video let's of course do a little squad overview check out some statistics from all of our players let's start off with none other than Carl Nash the reigning Super Bowl MVP at a 94 overall now ratings looking all good all around except for play action 73 kind of tough but good throw power accuracies are all almost in the 90s 98 throw on run and a hell of an athlete as well Carl Nash was definitely him and Nash was a beast man remember he came in halfway into the season Jared Goff started for the first half and the fans were hating it we were i think one in five one in four the fans were screaming for carl nash the man we traded up to get we brought him in and he was pretty good 23 10 um to touchdown to interception ratio though and then the second season 33 touchdowns nine picks 4400 yards led us to the super bowl as well where we fell short to patrick mahomes in the super power house kansas city chiefs um fourth year though in my opinion maybe his best year 4400 yards 37 touchdowns to just five picks was incredible but of course we did lose in i believe the divisional round there in year five we said f it just throw it just gunsling it just go crazy my guy 5200 yards 50 touchdowns a ton more interceptions but guess what we ended it off with the super bowl so who really cares DeAndre Swift, despite never going up to superstar, was pretty decent as well. I feel like he put up the same statistics every single season, about 4.5 a carry, about 1,200 yards to about 10 to 12 touchdowns. Swift was cool. Amon Ross St. Brown, the man that was so stingy when it came to his contracts, he needed a mentor or he was leaving us. The man that we had to franchise tag twice, but he stayed and he was amazing. His, his attributes are just outstanding. Everything's almost 99, except for short route, which is only 84 there. He was really good for us, though. Despite only having one real season where he put up eye-popping numbers, being um, this recent one with 1,400, 1500 yards and 12 touchdowns, he had about 1,000 yards every season, about 10 touchdowns. But Monroe St. Brown was a beast. I'm excited to see what he could be in the future because, man, he's looking good. Let's get him a QB. Jameson Williams was awesome as well. I'm very excited to see his partnership with the Monroe St. Brown. We brought in Gabe Davis as a big free agency signing as well, and he helped us get over that leap so shout out to him Hawkinson developed into a 99 overall superstar tight end and he was excellent throughout this whole video too offensive line I literally barely even touched Panay Sewell stayed here the whole time 97 overall Frank Ragnall just set it and leave it and let him do his thing one of the best centers in the league Jonah Jackson also was great we brought in Charles Cross here and he helped us get the Super Bowl and then Stratton was actually an animal only normal dev we drafted him as top five in the best online right away gets him up to star and he developed to an 86 and then defensively the defense was awesome man Hutchinson was great for us developed into a 97 superstar X factor now and Hutchinson had double digit sacks every single season we had him 11 in year one 10 and a half in year two then 12 and a half 17 and a half 15 and a half he's on a crazy trajectory if he keeps up those stats Hutchinson was an animal and could he do this in real life we'll have to find out and maybe my favorite player that we drafted Quandre Webb we almost, we were this close to going with the QB when I didn't need a QB, but we ended up getting an absolute animal at interior defensive line. He is a 98 overall superstar X Factor at just 20 four years old i mean you thought aaron donald was good this guy's coming to take that crown statistically out the waters with 98 strength 99 block shed just incredible 97 tackling as well quandra webb was different gravy 
and put up some great stats too with the defensive tackle position with 22 tackle for losses right away but double digit sacks for him as well with 10 13 and 12 at interior defensive line that is impressive Rashawn Gary who we of course brought in I believe in year three to really bolster up our defense and take us to another level no he never developed into a superstar but he put up great statistics alongside Webb and Hutchinson throughout as well all three of these guys double digit tackle for losses double digit sacks Jeff Okuda started this video as CB1 and ended the video with the Super Bowl and CB1 as well very excited to see how he progresses in real life obviously off to a great start here in his third season and you know maybe he can get himself into that conversation with Trevon Diggs Patrick Sertan and Steven Sauce Gardner all these young cornerbacks that are looking so good Akuda definitely looks the part Jeffrey was great we drafted him I think in year one as well, and he stayed around 83 overall. Bryce Hall, we brought in Teron Johns, Jerome Johnson. <laughs> Jose Evans, I believe a first year draft pick as well. 88 overall, I believe came out a star and then went up to superstar development. Shout out to him. Von Bell, John Johnson we got later on. Kenneth Murray we got in free agency. Sharpton, and then Haynes was so good. I believe he, I mean, this was the guy that I drafted in the third, fourth round. He was like a day three projection. Yeah, drafted in the third round, pick number nine. He ended up winning Defensive Rookie of the Year. Goes up to Superstar Development right away. He was so good for us, man. So, so what am I trying to look at here? Career stats. Um, he led us in tackles almost every single season. Just statistically, all around did his thing. Tackle for losses. He had some sacks. He had some picks. Led us in tackles. Devin Haynes was that guy. And ladies and gentlemen, that is going to be wraps for the Detroit Lions Reboot where we managed to fulfill our goal of getting a Super Bowl here in year number five, which feels great. We did make it twice, went one on one, but we'd take that all day long. We drafted some great players, made some big signings in free agency, and really kept the core of these players as well. So that was also my first rebuild in a while as well. If you guys did enjoy, please make sure to leave it a like and comment down below any other teams you would like me to do next. And of course, subscribe if you're new and if you're still here, because you probably enjoyed. I got more content like this on the channel already and coming in the future as well. But yeah, that's it from me. Take care. Peace.